Hi everybody, this is Jason with MDI and today we are doing a massive comparison between these three gimbals that I have sitting on this table. Starting with the far right, we have the updated Kame TV 7800. In the middle, we got the Mozwa made by Gu Sen. And then the nearest to me is the DJI Ronin. Now all three of these gimbals are great, but they're also very different in terms of what they can offer you. So we're going to do a pretty long video maybe. I might ramble a lot, so please bear with me. We're going to get to all the good stuff. So why don't we start with a Kame TV 7800, the updated version. This is by far the cheapest one on this table, clocking in at about $1,200. It's also the very lightest of the three. And while that's a good thing, because you don't necessarily want to be carrying around a heavy gimbal, just know that if you're going to be doing some really crazy action movements, that you're probably not going to get the smoothest footage if that's what you're going for. Now, the heaviest one is the DJI Ronin by a lot, and it's also the most expensive one on this table, clocking in at about $2,500. Now, the heaviness is actually not a bad thing. Number one is if you are a red shooter with a red camera, you're actually going to be able to stabilize that thing on this gimbal, whereas the other two cannot. So that is definitely one thing in its uh, favor. The other thing is, if you are operating a lighter camera on the DJI Ronin, having that extra weight actually helps eliminate human error. Now, most of the times, just because it's a gimbal doesn't mean you can just run around with it and everything will automatically look great. You're going to still have to walk with proper technique, like if you were using a steady cam. So having that extra weight is actually going to help you in this case. Now, in the middle, we have the Mozwa. This one is literally right in the middle. It's at $2,200. It's also not the heaviest and not the lightest, but it, it has some great, great motion compensation in terms of how you're using it. It's got a little bit of the heft compared to the Kame TV, so it does allow for smoother footage. And the other thing is, if you take a look at the yaw bar and the cage, it's also a very solid build compared to the Kame TV, which is kind of segmented in a way. So the Kame TV suffers from horizontal wobble, whereas the Mozwa and the DJI do not. So check out some of these test footage that we did between all three of them. We walked with it and we ran with it. Tell us what you think. So what do you think? Personally, I like to shoot a lot of action movies, and when you took a look at the running footage from the Kame TV, there was definitely a lot of noticeable shake compared to the Mozwa and the DJI. And for me, having that little shake while running actually adds to the scene for me. But if you do need the smooth footage, uh, the Mozwa and the DJI gave a really good performance as far as running, with I would say the DJI was a little bit ahead of the Mozwa, and here's why. The, Mo uh, the DJI has an app that allows you to auto-tune everything to the camera once it's balanced. The Mozwa, at this point in time, you can't do that. But there is an app in the works, so once we actually have the app and can auto-tune to the camera, we will have to do another comparison just to see if it actually improves or not. Now, another great thing about these three gimbals is that there's ways to operate how the camera is pointing when the operator is working with it. Now, the, the Kame TV has a little thumb jog wheel, 
The Moitoi also has a little fun wireless remote control, but the DJI does not. It actually has an entire separate remote. Now, this is a plus in terms of if you do have a second operator, having him control the pan, the tilt, the roll of the DJI while the operator just concentrates on the framing is definitely very good for those uh, very planned, crucial shots. However, if you are a one-man band, which most indie filmmakers are in some cases, you're going to want to probably have something like the Came TV and the Mozwa, where you as the operator can actually uh, handle the tilt and adjust the, um, the pan as well. So I would say that if you're definitely always shooting on your own, you're probably going to want to go with either the Mozwa or the Came TV, just so that you actually have the operation of the camera itself. That being said, the Mozwa still comes ahead just a little bit more because if you're shooting with uh, a Canon, a Sony, or a Panasonic, you're actually gonna be able to start and stop the recording on the fly. You're not gonna have to hold the camera or set it on a stand to stop. You actually have the remote and you can do it right there and then. Uh, as well as you can focus the lenses if you're using a Canon or a Sony. But again, it is a stepping type of focus as of right now, so it might not actually fit in terms of racking focus, but it's still a feature that is unique to the Mozwa and it does not come along with the DJI or the Came TV. Now the one important thing when deciding on which gimbal you would like to get is the setup time. Because let's be honest, time is money. The faster you can set up the gimbal, the faster you can do your shoots, and the more shoots you can do, as well as making sure you don't miss a shot. So the Came TV 7800, the updated version, is actually not too bad. Setting up is fairly quick. Um, balancing, the, balancing the camera in the cage is also fairly quick, minus two points where uh, you actually need a screwdriver to, to adjust. So we would love to see it have the completely toolless design like the other two gimbals and that way it could be faster. Now one thing about the Came TV is if for some odd reason the calibration that's already built in does not work, you're actually going to have to have a laptop with you to tap into the control box and if you forget to bring the laptop, then you're kind of out of luck. You're not going to be able to use the gimbal effectively. Now, the DJI Ronin, while it's completely toolless design, there is a little bit of a finicky in terms of setup time because uh, setting up our camera took probably over 30, maybe over 30 minutes just to get it to work. While the camera was balanced the way it should and nothing was going off kilter, when we went into the app and hit the auto-tune button, or even as soon as we picked up the gimbal, the motors just went crazy. And there was really no reason why it should have, so we're not quite sure why that happened. But that being said, uh, there is an app. If something is not calibrating correctly, at least you have the app on your smartphone. Most of us all have a smartphone these days, so it's good to know that you don't need to have a laptop with you in the case that you need to calibrate. Now, the Mozwa is by far the fastest. From setup time to balancing the camera and then calibrating the thing, uh, you're probably looking at maybe 10 to 12 minutes and you're ready to go straight out of the box. There's nothing else that you really need to do. Now granted, once the app does come around, they'll have some more fine tunes, but we've actually taken this out on a shoot before and we didn't have that calibration from the app and just doing the simple calibration from the remote control that, uh, that it comes with, we were able to do some great shots. So which one do we recommend? Honestly, these three gimbals are very different in a way, and it just kind of depends on what you're comfortable with. Uh, with the Came TV, while it is the cheapest, um, you're kind of limited down to just small DSLR bodies. You're not gonna be able to use a heavier camera on there per se. And there's also a lot of customization that can go in that you actually have to use the software to tune it to how you want. Now, would I say this is probably the best thing for a beginner? Not necessarily, because it's not really you take it out of the box, you set it up, and then it's ready to go. That's more for the DJI and the Mozwa, which out of all of these, I actually prefer the Mozwa, based because on its solid build, the way you can travel with it, how fast you can just set it up and go right out of the box, 
and it's pretty much just ready to go. Now, the DJI is very similar in a way, um, and the reason that I'm not going with the DJI is because the, we're not really shooting with red cameras. We're not really shooting with heavy cameras. Um, from all our videos, you've probably noticed that we're shooting all on GH4, a micro four thirds format. So the lenses are very small. The camera bodies are very small. So having this really heavy gimbal that's capable of lifting much more is just not in our interest. So as of right now, I would say the best bang for the buck and being able to just do everything right out of the box, ready to go, I would say uh, get the Mozo made by Gusen. So what are your thoughts? Which gimbal do you think is right for you? Why don't you leave them down in the comment below and we will see you next time.